Hi, it's Artsy from Brown Bear Herbs. I've been wanting to do a video about boundaries, your energetic boundaries for a while. So today seemed like a good day because tomorrow is the new moon in Scorpio. And at this time of the year, the veil is said to be thinner, which means that um, like information and, and spiritual beings like it's easier for that um, to come through. There's less of a clear boundary. And that happens every day around dawn and dusk too. And when you think about it, the way that the light is changing right now, as it always does at this time of year, it's like um, that like sense of like dusk is like, sinking into us more and you know we're moving into like we're halfway between like the equal time and the totally dark the, the darkest time so um anyways you can kind of tune into like that energy and and understand like start to tune into the times of day to the in between times so it's kind of like we're in a big in between time of in between time of the year um where it's getting really close to dark, but it's not dark yet. So, um, some people like to work with other energies. Um, some people are sensitive, but don't like it. And, um, as an herbalist, I'm pragmatist. I'm working with mother earth. So I say, whatever you want, it's great. Let's try to do that. Um, so I'll talk about a few herbs that are good for helping have stronger boundaries. So if you're feeling like in any situation or at this time of year or whatever, where you're feeling like your boundaries are not strong enough, you could try those herbs. And then I'll talk about herbs that thin your boundaries, that give you a sense of expansiveness and make you more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just briefly talk about GNP because that's, I just feel like soothing. Sometimes I, it's almost like our feathers get a little ruffled if we're sensitive. And GNP is really good for that. So, um, okay, first the, big, first the bigger, better boundaries. Um, I talked about Yara recently, so that's a video that you can watch that's a few back. Um, that is definitely good for holes in your energetic field. And St. John's Wort is also good for holes in your energetic field. You can take those together as a dynamic duo if you're having problems like that. Um, I do talk about that a little bit in the Yarrow video, both of those. But then if you are going into a situation where you know that you're going to be dealing with a difficult personality, like say you have a relative that's really um, amazing at getting under your skin, uh, or you're going to work with a client who is triggering or challenging for you, something like that. I recommend Devil's Club. We have it in the shop in tincture form. And um, I recommend really low doses. I would start with like a couple drops and see how that feels. And then you can increase. But it does depend somewhat, as with all herbs, on how sensitive you are. And then um, if you take too much Devil's Club, you can get a little aggressive. <laughs> so you don't want that. Um, because you don't want people to, if, if you're, if you're normally a person who's not like that, then you don't want to surprise people by being overly aggressive because it, they might, it might not go, go well. So the devil's club for me, when I did plant meditation about it, um, and my continuing experiences, it's like puts you in like a cone of steel. Like it is just amazing. And, um, I've tried that with some really difficult people, um, and it, it's like, wow, I'm protected. So, but a little goes a long way. Um, yeah. So I love that. Um, and it also, like, if you have, like, people that have talked about head injuries before, that can also cause you to feel much more sensitive. So it could be like a time of year, a time of day, a person, it could be a health issue causing you to feel more sensitive to other people's emotions. You can try it for any of those 
any reason, it's just going to firm up those boundaries. So um, it's more for the boundaries than like a specific issue that is causing the boundaries. It's a cool herb. <laughs> um, it grows here. So, and then um, two herbs that I like for kind of thinning the boundaries so that you become more sensitive are mugwort and elderflower. Elderflower is used to, or it's associated with the fairy realm. And so that's definitely going to be easier to connect with if you are like not having those, the identity being fixed on this physical realm and you're like getting more of like the floaty feeling of the elder flower. Elder flower is also great for fevers and respiratory um, issues. It's safe for kids. So uh, even infants, if they're having respiratory issues, it's a good remedy. So you could make an elder flower tea for your child and you have like a fairy party and you could actually, um, you know, talk to fairies and just set your intention to have to connect with positive energies and talk to your guides and set your intention. Your intention is very powerful, even if you don't really know how it works. So don't set it without doubt. Just assume it's going to work. Set it clearly. And you might even want to write out your intention just so you get it right. Um, so kind of crafting your intention. So, you know, like I want to speak with the fairies. I want to learn from them. I want to learn from them in a pace that I can manage. Like fairies don't have a great sense of human time frames and physical world restrictions. And sometimes they like to go fast. So just, um, you know, maybe if you do want to work with fairies, you can, um, just ask them to be respectful of your physical world, human lifestyle limitations. Um, but it could be fun to do with you and someone who's younger or you and someone who's older. Elder is also good at end of life. So again, on the peripheries, the in-between phases, like just being born, just about to die, um, that that's kind of the general theme when the boundaries are the most thin. So like, um, you know, the time of year being this like, um, kind of like dusky, um, going into the darkness, not the full night of the year, but like we're entering it. And then like the crepuscular times of day, dawn and dusk, and the crepuscular times of life, birth and death. Uh -huh. So that's elderflower. It's actually like a f kind of fun, lighthearted, but just trying to call in the most positive aspects of any of those interactions because there are light there are forces that are like more positive and their forces are more negative it's unrealistic to not acknowledge that and so just simply um, asking for the positive information and then if you are feeling like too open and you have the devil's club too you could bring it back down close it down. You can do that through your intention. Like I want my energy to be back in, but you could also just have the devil's club or, or other grounding herbs, depending on how much support you need for that. And then you can, you're going to be grounded again and you're not going to feel like so permeable. Mugwort is more lunar and dreamy and ethereal. It's in our astral and body and but I, I love it, especially in the astral and body, because it, for some people, mugwort can feel so spacey that it's almost overwhelming. Like, it feels like your your mind is being spread out so far, like to the moon and back or something, and you're not grounded enough. So that's why I really like the astral and body, because the vervain and um, yarrow are more grounding but you're still having that like sense of connection, but without just being like floating away. But if you're just wanting to do it to like have that experience of um, sensitivity and awareness that's like more expansive, then definitely try mugwort on its own. And it's also good at certain times of life. Um, a lot of people who are going through menopause really like mugwort. It has a good feeling for them. But, I mean, 
I know people of all ages and all genders that, that appreciate my gourd. So that definitely has a magical lunar quality, whereas elderflower, I'd say more like fairy vibes. Um, St. John's wort is also good for talking with the fairies. So you could take those two together. Now with St. John's wort, you want to make sure that you are um, using fresh St. John's wort, which at this time of year, you cannot go pick fresh St. John's wort. And maybe where you live, you can't do that either. So you just want to make sure that you read the labels and you purchase a tincture that has um, fresh is made from the fresh plant. It's not too hard to find. You do want to make sure that you're looking for that because it's the oil that you want. That's going to that's gonna be what helps you with depression. Um, and that's going to be what helps with a few different things that St. John's Wort is good for. St. John's Wort has like a lot of helpful things about it besides the seasonal affective disorder and depression associated with chronic pain and chronic illness. In fact, in herbalism, those are not the primary things that people think of with St. John's Wort. Um, so... So yes, for fairy work, <laughs> I highly recommend St. John's Wort and Elderflower. <laughs> mm, makes me happy to think about. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I have seen some fairies. My daughter got a little jealous because I seen some before she had. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to be motivated to explore spiritually. Um, Anyways, so yeah, we talked about like serious grounding, healing energetic holes in your field. And I think St. John's where it's like either way, like you can, if you're helping you talk to fairies, it's like a moderator of energetic openings. If you look at the leaf of St. John's where in the light, you'll see little pinprick holes where the light can come through, can come through. So... By taking it, perhaps it like allows an opening to happen so that you can have that communication with the fairy folk. Um, I think you should do it. It's <laughs> make the make the dark days a little bit more interesting to connect with the fairy energy. And then <laughs> I didn't really think I was going to go in this direction, but. Um, I feel, I feel good thinking about them. I feel like they're with me. So then just briefly wanted to talk about um, gentle protective, which is good for if you're normally using tobacco to deal with your emotional and psychic sensitivity. The herbs in gentle protective will help with those boundaries in a way that's not addictive. So they're not like creating like tough field. They're just protective herbs. And I feel like it just like kind of like soft softens your field and like kind of like getting a pet down. I think of it as having like hug vibes, fairy godmother vibes, um, stuffy vibes, just like the soothing feeling. So like if you've just been like overwhelmed emotionally or or overwhelmed like psychically because you're a sensitive person, then it just kind of like calming that down instead of using tobacco, which tobacco does have properties to help soothing and feeling like pr more protected. But obviously, especially with all the chemicals involved, it um, has the really bad negative side effects of addiction and health problems, severe health problems. So it's GMP for you. So <laughs> I hope that you feel like you have some tools for thinking more about your energy body and why you're feeling the way that you're feeling inside. And the way that your energy body is functioning definitely affects your physical health. A lot of these herbs are also good for, they're all good for physical health issues as well. And if you learn about more about herbs, and I'll tell you more about some of my herbs that I like to work with a lot, then you can start seeing, oh, like I need raspberry leaf anyways um, for a physical health problem. And I like the sound of like this like, soothing from the gentle and protective smoking blend. 
I wonder if raspberry leaf is a good, really good fit for me. And it probably is if you're finding that an herb is good for like, like for example, St. John's wort. Like say you want to talk to fairies and you're sensitive to other people's energy and you have some like intestinal issues or liver issues or depression from chronic pain, then that's sounding like you would really enjoy St. John's wort. I do have a little stock on hand. I don't list it on the site because I have so little of it, but if you really can't find it, you can send me an email and I can bottle some up for you. Um, but anyways, I hope that you explore your energetic body, start acknowledging it, acknowledging that it needs um, some TLC as well, and that you can really um, direct what form of TLC that is, whether it's like a little bit more play time with like opening up to allowing it to be like a gateway for talking to fairies or connecting with moon energy. Or if it's like, no, mama says, no, we're going to shut down these boundaries. Um, then yeah, you get to choose. So <laughs> have fun. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a more lighthearted video after it's been such an intense little <laughs> election season and everything else that's been going on in the pandemic and everything, just something playful that you can do, socially isolated <laughs> and entertaining and educational. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Good luck out there.